The movie is about a guy named Nick Lovell, who gets put in jail in Japan in 1954. He used to be a soldier for the United States and got a 10-year prison sentence. In the beginning of the movie, we see Nick cleaning the prison bathroom. Soon after, five strong, tattooed guys come out of the bathroom. One of them walks up to Nick and stares at him angrily. After they leave, Nick goes into the bathroom and finds another guy tied up and hanging. Nick didn't stay quiet. He yelled for the guards and tried to rescue the man. Another prisoner showed up and together they managed to lower the man down. He had tattoos all over his body. Surprisingly, Nick's brave act didn't earn him any praise. Shortly after, a bunch of guards dragged Nick and the other prisoner who helped him away. The chief guard said he got a letter from the man who was going to hang himself, claiming that a member of the Yakuza would be let out of prison. Nick didn't speak Japanese, so he didn't understand what the guard was saying. The guard got more and more frustrated until he finally ordered Nick to be put in solitary confinement. In the solitary room, Nick finds himself locked up with the man he saved earlier from hanging. The man introduces himself as Kiyosi, a member of the Siramutsu Yakuza clan. Kiyosi then asks Nick for his help and shares his plan to break out of prison. It turns out Kiyosi was intentionally trying to end his life so the guards would take him to the hospital. Once at the hospital, a member of the Siramutsu clan would come to aid Kiyosi in escaping. In return for Nick's help, Kiyosi promises that his brothers in the Siramutsu clan would assist Nick later if he successfully escapes. The plan was set. Nick gathers some rocks while the other prisoners are busy mining in the prison area. Then he sharpens one of the stones to make it pointy for Kiyosi's plan. A few days later, back in the isolation room, Kiyosi gets ready to stab himself with the sharp stone. He tells Nick to ensure he doesn't die, and then calls the guards for help. Everything goes according to plan. The guards get scared when they see Kiyosi hurt and quickly sound the alarm. To sum it up, Nick's prison term is cut short, and he's released early. He leaves the prison looking different, with his hair cut and beard shaved. Outside, a man and a car are waiting for him, and they take him to the Siramutsu Yakuza clan headquarters in Osaka. Upon arrival, the Siramutsu officials greet Nick warmly and express their gratitude for his assistance. Then, one of the leaders offers Nick a job, handling their dealings with an American. Nick accepts the job offer. In the evening, Nick heads to a gambling spot and then a bar after a Siramutsu clan member gives him some money to rent a room. At the bar, Nick meets a lovely Japanese woman who catches his attention, so he gives her extra tips. The next day, Kiyosi takes Nick to a factory to meet an American man named Anthony Panetti. Nick's task is to talk with Panetti about his metal factory and business, because he had previously turned down Siramutsu's offer. Actually, Panetti got another negotiation offer from a different Yakuza clan, Seizu from Kobe, who wanted to use an American negotiator. Panetti wasn't happy about Nick's visit. He didn't just welcome him. Instead, he complained about Japanese culture and the Yakuza, and he made it clear he wouldn't sell his factory's metal at a lower price to Siramutsu. Nick understands that words alone won't solve the problem, so he grabs the typewriter and hits Panetti on the head with it. This makes Panetti agree to think about Siramutsu's offer. After successfully completing his first job, the Siramutsu clan officials take Nick, along with Kiyosi, to a bar to celebrate. However, while they're enjoying drinks, members of the Seizu clan show up to confront them about what happened with Panetti. One of the Seizu members keeps taunting Nick until he loses his temper and hits the Seizu member on the head with a bottle. The Siramotsu clan members react quickly by pointing a gun at the Seizu clan, abandoning their plan to seek revenge for Nick's actions and choosing to leave the bar instead. Nick's actions in the bar grab the attention of the Siramotsu clan, and Kiyosi starts to like him. As a result, Kiyosi offers Nick a fancy apartment and invites him to join the Siramutsu clan as a Yakuza member. Then, Kiyosi asks Nick to help with a job at a bar where the owner is trying to challenge the authority of the Siramutsu clan. When negotiations don't go well again, Nick hits the bar owner in the neck, and then Kiyosi fatally stabs him. Once the task is done, Kiyosi invites Nick to a nightclub owned by Siramutsu. There, a pretty woman, whom Nick had met before at the bar, 
is dancing with some men. Mick keeps watching the small Japanese woman, and it seems Kiyoshi does the same. Kiyoshi then pulls the woman away from the dance floor and scolds her. He's concerned that if a member of the Seizu clan arrives at the nightclub with weapons and sees his little sister on the dance floor, it could be dangerous. After that, Kiyoshi asks Nick to help take the woman, who turns out to be Kiyoshi's younger sister named Miyu, back home. Nick follows the order and goes to Miyu's house. When he arrives, Miyu playfully invites him inside. They then engage in intimate relations, during which Nick notices a Yakuza tattoo on Miyu's back. The scene shifts to the next day when Kiyoshi contacts Nick again for a new mission. He instructs Nick to purchase weapons from an American soldier for this task. Kiyoshi emphasizes that the soldier must remain unaware that Nick or the purchase is connected to the Siramotsu clan. Therefore, Nick has to carry out the mission on his own. Next, Nick heads to the dock to meet the American soldier for the weapons deal. Instead of finding the soldier, he discovers a dead body, followed by the arrival of the Seizu clan. The clan tries to disrupt the weapon purchase and steal Nick's money. However, Nick had previously hidden the money in the car, so the Seizu clan members couldn't find it, which angered them and led them to decide to kill him. One of the Seizu members is chosen to execute Nick, and he orders Nick to kneel. Initially, Nick obeys, but he uses his skills to turn the situation around and instead attacks the Seizu clan, killing two of their members. The commotion at the dock catches the attention of the Siramotsu leader. He quickly gathers all clan members, including Nick and Kiyoshi. The leader suspects a traitor among them who leaked the plan to purchase weapons. However, Kiyoshi reassures everyone that the $2 million brought by Nick is safe because it has been hidden. Additionally, the Siramotsu leader blames Nick for the error of killing two Seizu members, which could spark a Yakuza war. To prevent this, the Siramotsu leader orders Nick to apologize by cutting off two of his fingers. Upon learning about the situation, Kiyoshi pleaded with the Siramotsu leader to allow him to cut off two of his own fingers as he felt responsible for ordering Nick's actions. The Siramotsu leader agreed, and then he sent Nick and Kiyoshi's finger segments to the Seizu clan as an apology for the deaths of their two members. The scene changes to Nick and the Siramotsu leader talking in a car. During their conversation, it is revealed that the Siramotsu leader, who is also Kiyoshi's stepfather, suspects that there is a spy from the Seizu clan within their own. It turns out that the Siramutsu leader brought Nick to a ceremony where he was welcomed before officially being accepted into the Siramutsu family clan. While they're celebrating Nick's acceptance in the evening, Nick steps out of the bar to have a talk with Kiyoshi. Nick tells Kiyoshi about his relationship with Miyu, which doesn't initially receive Kiyoshi's approval. Kiyoshi had hoped his younger sister wouldn't marry a Yakuza because he was concerned for her safety. However, Nick insists, promising to protect Miyu at all costs. After learning that Nick and Miyu had been intimate, Kiyoshi finally agrees to their relationship and even congratulates Nick, considering them as brothers now. After officially becoming a Yakuza in the Siramutsu clan and gaining Kiyoshi's approval, Nick decides to get the same tattoo as Miyu on his back. Miyu accompanies Nick to the tattoo artist and explains the significance of the distinctive tattoos on Yakuza members' bodies. In the days that follow, Nick embraces life as a Yakuza. One day, while on a train with Miyu, Nick spots one of the Seizu members who had previously attempted to kill him at the dock. The scene then shifts to the Seizu group arriving at the Siramutsu clan headquarters. They propose a business deal but the Siramotsu leader feels insulted because the Seizu group didn't bring their own leader, instead sending younger members who were considered inexperienced. Despite the leader's disappointment, a Siramotsu official named Orochi tries to convince him to accept the business offer, but the leader rejects it outright. That evening, Orochi vents his frustration to Kiyoshi while they're drinking, expressing disappointment that the Siramotsu leader didn't heed his advice. Kiyoshi warns him, but Orochi seems already consumed by anger. Later, when Orochi returns home, the Siramotsu leader refuses to see him, showing his annoyance. Orochi leaves the bar to meet Miyu. It turns out that Miyu and Orochi had a previous romantic relationship, and now he tries to seduce her, but she firmly refuses. 
Orochi's anger boils over, and he slaps her while attempting to force himself on her. Once again, the scene shifts to a meeting between the Siramutsu and Seizu groups, this time at a sumo match. The chairman of Seizu approaches the Siramutsu leader with a different proposal, not regarding business but suggesting that the Siramutsu leader retire peacefully and allow his clan to merge with Seizu. The Siramutsu leader declines, seeing the offer as an insult. He reminds the chairman that the Siramutsu clan are like wolves, not obedient dogs to be kept in a pen. Before departing, he warns the Seizu chairman to be cautious on the journey back to Kobe. While on his way home, Nick is suddenly greeted by an American man. It's Pauly Bowers, an American soldier and Nick's former partner who is on leave. Bowers seems surprised but pleased to see Nick, so Nick feels obliged to accompany him. However, during their conversation, Bowers threatens to report Nick for allegedly faking his death to evade a military trial. Thinking fast, Nick invites Bowers to his house. Once there, Nick offers Bowers a drink, but instead, he grabs a penknife and fatally stabs Bowers in the neck. Later, Nick visits Miyu's house. When Miyu opens the door, Nick is shocked to see a wound on her face. Furious, he demands to know who hurt her, but she refuses to say. Instead, she reveals that she's pregnant with Nick's child, but asks him to leave her. Nick then heads to Kiyoshi's house to inform him about Miyu's pregnancy. He tells Kiyoshi that he's willing to leave the Siramotsu clan if Kiyoshi wishes. Kiyoshi wasn't angry. Instead, he invited Nick into the house. Inside, he gave Nick two swords called Daiso, explaining that they belonged to his father. One sword is for killing, and the other is for taking one's own life. Kiyoshi shared that he had raised Miyu since she was a baby and now entrusted her care to Nick. Nick chooses one of the Daiso swords and asks for Kiyoshi's help to bury Bauer's body. Meanwhile, Orochi is seen at the Seizu headquarters, conversing with the clan chief. It's revealed that Orochi has betrayed Siramutsu and intends to dismantle the clan. The following day, the Siramutsu leader is at the tailor shop, escorted by Kiyoshi and Nick. When the leader doesn't emerge from the dressing room, Nick investigates and discovers a tailor shop employee strangling the leader. Nick intervenes to save him, and when Kiyoshi arrives and witnesses the situation, he shoots the employee. They quickly rush to their car, but before they can escape, Seizu members arrive and launch an attack. Nick and Kiyoshi fight back, trying to protect the leader, but a Seizu clan member shoots Kiyoshi, killing him. Nick and the Siramutsu leader successfully flee and regroup at their base, gathering all remaining clan members. The leader reveals that among the cars escorting them to the tailor shop, there were members of the Seizu clan, indicating traitors within the Siramutsu clan. They resolve to seek revenge and initiate a war against the Seizu clan. Meanwhile, Miyu breaks down in tears when Nick tells her about Kiyoshi's death. Nick and the surviving Siramutsu clan members start eliminating the Seizu Yakuza one by one. The battle swings in Siramutsu's favor after Nick intimidates one of Seizu's high-ranking members. However, Seizu's leader sends a young boy to deliver a message to Siramutsu's headquarters, proposing to end the war. Seizu's leader invites Siramutsu's clan to engage in a fight in a neutral location without weapons. Siramotsu's leader accepts this invitation and sends Nick and the clan members to the docks to initiate the battle. In a surprising turn of events, Chairman Seizu arrives with Orochi, who immediately confesses to betraying Siramotsu. Despite considering Orochi as his own child, the Siramotsu leader forgives him and pleads for Orochi to return before it's too late. As they embrace, Orochi unexpectedly stabs the Siramotsu leader to death. The Siramotsu clan members witnessing this are unable to intervene as they are surrounded by weapons. Orochi declares the end of the Siramotsu clan and offers to spare Nick's life if he leaves Miyu. Ignoring Orochi's demand, Nick prepares to retaliate, but a sniper shoots him in the leg. Meanwhile, the police raid and set fire to Siramotsu's headquarters. That evening, Nick covertly sneaks into Miyu's house, which is being guarded by the Seizu clan, to rescue Miyu. Later, he arrives at Seizu's headquarters, armed with the Daiso sword given to him by Kiyoshi. Nick respectfully requests permission from the Seizu clan to confront Orochi. However, when confronted by Nick, 
Orochi disdainfully rejects the challenge, dismissing Nick as merely a gaijin or foreigner who can never truly be Yakuza. Enraged, Nick retrieves his sword and swiftly beheads Orochi without hesitation. Unexpectedly, the leader of the Seizu clan intervenes, stopping another member who was about to shoot Nick. Instead, he instructs Nick to leave and return home, as he has already avenged Siramutsu by killing Orochi. Nick follows the order and departs from Seizu's headquarters. The outsider concludes with Nick arriving at the apartment, where he's hiding Miyu. She warmly greets him and embraces him tightly, while the other Siramutsu Yakuza guarding the apartment salute Nick, indicating that he will now lead the Siramutsu clan. So the moral of the story is, never underestimate the power of a clean bathroom, because you never know where it might lead you, whether it's to unexpected alliances, daring escapes, or even Yakuza leadership.